Hello friends, and welcome to a look at the drawing assistance that you get with the brush tool in Tahoma. And these are assistants for drawing straight lines on raster and smart raster levels. But before we start, let me mention that I've added links in the description to each section of this tutorial, and you can see them in the new timeline here on YouTube. So you can skip to the parts you want to see. And if you're new here, I'm Darren T, and I make tutorials for Tahoma and OpenTunes, so subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of when I release a new video. So using the brush tool, you can draw any kind of line anywhere. But if you want to draw exactly straight lines, up till now you'd have to switch to the geometry tool, and then choose the line option. And now you can draw straight lines in any direction by clicking and dragging them out. Or if you hold the shift key on a Windows machine, then you can draw lines fixed to either horizontal, vertical, or 45 degree angles. But you notice that the red preview line doesn't show where it's going to lock to until you release it. And then you'd have to switch back to the brush tool to continue drawing freehand. But Tahoma has added some assistance to the raster and smart raster levels to give you some assistance while drawing with the brush tool. And when the brush is selected, you can see a reminder of what they are in the status bar. So let's take a look at those. Firstly, you can draw straight lines in any direction by holding the shift key. And this makes it easy to switch from drawing curves to drawing straights. And notice that the line thickness is using the smaller of the brush size settings. And for larger lines, you can adjust this directly, or you can untick the pressure option at the right hand side here. And then it will draw these lines with the larger of the brush size setting. And if you want to control your lines to draw at 90 degree or 45 degree angles, like we did with the geometry tool, you hold the control key while you draw. And notice that you can start drawing the line, and with the control key still held down, move it to lock onto another angle. And you can keep moving it around until you release your mouse button or take your stylus off the tablet. So the control key allows you to control lines drawn to 45 degree angles, but if you want an alternative angle, then you use the ALT key. So the ALT key allows you to use an alternative point that your line can be drawn to. And to draw to this alternate point, just hold ALT and start drawing. And you'll draw a line either to the point, or away from it, depending which direction you draw to. And without setting any specific points on the level, as we haven't here, the centre of the camera is used. But you can set up your own points on this level by holding CTRL and ALT. And as soon as you create your first point, the centre is no longer used. So I can hold CTRL and ALT and then click up here. And this will now be the point to draw to. And it's shown as a little green circle. And now when I draw my lines while holding ALT, they're now drawn to or away from this point. And this can be handy for certain effects or patterns. For instance, for drawing the spokes of a wheel. And I'm sure you can think of your own uses for it. So to remove the point, you just hold CTRL and ALT again and click on it. And when you remove the last one, the centre of the camera automatically becomes the only point again. But you can add multiple points to draw to. So if I add another wheel here, so holding CTRL and ALT, I click on the line, and then we'll add some circles for the centre. And now that there's two points on screen, I can add lines to draw to either point. So while you draw the line, as you move away from one point towards the other, 
to Homer will lock the line to the nearest point. So I can quickly finish this bike with a few lines to make up the frame. And it's handy to have multiple points so you don't have to remove your first when you want another. And again, hold Ctrl and Alt and click on a point to remove it. So if I remove those two, and now when I hold Alt, the lines will always be drawn to the center of the camera. And all of this leads me to a very specific use of the points, and that's to use them as vanishing points for perspective drawing. So if you add just one point and use that for drawing anything that isn't horizontal or vertical, then you're drawing in one point perspective. So if I had a vanishing point here, and then draw a cube, and I use the control key to get horizontal and vertical lines, and then the alt key to draw towards the vanishing point, I notice that I'm using the ruler guides, and this is just so I can draw a line in one movement. And if I draw a second cube in a different location, notice how it's using the same perspective. And you can do the same for two or three point perspective, just add the vanishing points. So if I remove this last one that I've just added by holding Ctrl and Alt and clicking on it, and then go to a new frame, I can now add two more points. And this time I'd like a wider perspective, so I'll add the vanishing points outside of the camera area. So I'll create a horizon line here, and then add a point on the left hand side, outside the camera, and one on the right. And now if I draw a cube, you'll see it's in two point perspective. Again, I use the ruler guides to help with drawing the correct length of line. And using the alternative points as vanishing points is really useful and gives you accurate perspective drawings, but they can give you rigid lines to your objects. So you might consider using your perspective drawings as guides. And there's two ways to do this. Firstly, you can just draw out a grid on a guide level, just to let you know where the perspective lies. So if we create a new level, and add the vanishing points, and I can draw just the number of guidelines to that point. And now you can draw your lines using the standard brush in freehand mode. So the lines are now less rigid, but still accurate to the perspective you've set up. And secondly, you can draw your object perfectly in perspective and then overdraw it by hand to add imperfections or additional detail. So using the same perspective guide level, I can draw my shape in perspective. So let's make it a cube again down here. And then over that, you can hand draw your image using this guide as a rough layout. And of course, you can still use the assistance on this level if you want perfectly straight lines, but this gives you a chance to have more natural lines, but still drawn in correct perspective. And there's just one last thing that I'd like to show you and offer as advice, and that's a suggestion to add a level to store the location of the vanishing point markers. And this is because the markers are stored in the scene file for this specific level only. So if you build your image up for multiple levels, when you change to another level, you won't have the markers available and you'd have to add them in the same place for the new level. So if you create a new markers level, and I'd recommend choosing a vector level for this, because then you can add markers outside of the camera area. And then you can add a mark where you want your vanishing points to be. But if you've already added them on your level first, then you can use the ruler guides to mark out where they are. So if I go back to an earlier frame, you can see the two markers here. So if I click on the ruler and add a horizon guide, and then a couple of vertical guides of where the markers are. And now when I go to my vector markers level, I can see those points. So I can simply add across where I want the vanishing points to be. And then if I add a new smart raster level, 
If those ruler guides are gone, I can now see where I want the vanishing points to be. So using the brush tool, I can hold Ctrl and Alt, and then tap in the center. And now on my second level, I can still have lines being drawn towards the vanishing points. So there we are, drawing assistants to give you assistance with drawing. Try them out yourself. A neat tool for making your drawings neater. And that's a Darren T. Have you always wanted to animate but didn't know how to start and software seemed expensive and difficult to use? Well, with OpenTunes, it's free, powerful, and once you know how, it's easy to use. And it's my mission to get you animating with it today. Hi, my name's Darren, and I've been teaching OpenTunes for the past three years, showing thousands of students, just like you, how easy it is to animate with, and cutting through the jargon to show that anyone can animate with it. And by the end of the course, you'll be able to animate traditionally using OpenTunes. And the course is designed for students brand new to OpenTunes, as well as those new to animation. So take a look at the free lessons I've offered below, and then why not sign up and join me animating traditionally with OpenTunes.